Home from Poe Productions. This little video mini series is going to show all five different popular multi-touch techniques that you can build, use to build your own multi-touch setup. We're going to go over DSI, which is Diffuse Surface Illumination, FTIR, Frustrated Total Internal Reflection, Rear DI, which is Rear Diffused Illumination, LLP, which is Laser Light Plane, and LED LP, which is LED Light Plane. Uh, I built this little box here that's going to have different layers on top that are basically going to showcase all those different methods. We're using a short throw projector and a M12 setup camera which is using the PSI camera board and a varifocal lens. Okay, to build a FTIR table, it's a frustrated total internal reflection. Some of the benefits are an enclosed box is not required. Your blobs have strong contrast. You can also set it up to have a varying blob pressure and with a compliance surface it can be used with something as small as a pen tip. Uh, a couple of disadvantages, it needs to have a compliance surface which is a silicone layer. You cannot recognize fiducial markers and you ha can't use a glass or hard acrylic surface. So the surface is typically a thin piece of material. Uh, here we have a piece of vinyl. It's white, you typically want to use something that's grayish so you get better colors. Uh, on the other side I've done the Tinkerman method, which is basically, you can see it there, it is a layering of silicone on it. So you can see that this material would never be, you don't attach it or anything. You basically take this piece of material, put it onto a surface, and use the Tinkerman method and roll your mixture of xyol and silicone and then let it dry. Uh, this is uh, four layers. So I don't know how thick that is, but it's pretty good at making a multi-touch surface. Uh, the setup here, an FTR surface is composed of a few things. You have LEDs going around the edge. Here I've used the 8mm uh, LEDs from Environmental Lights. And you can also make your own LED frame out of the Osram's 880 nanometers that are also really popular or you can just use the ribbon which takes all of a few minutes to put around. This is a piece of acrylic in a aluminum L frame and the ribbon going around. So this is your connection to the 60 watt adapter um, and this is basically its frame on itself. So we're going to put this onto the box. Okay, so we put the frame onto the table here. Basically, again, you can see the silicone layer is down. Layers are acrylic, silicone, and then the vinyl or drafting paper, whatever rear projection material you're going to be using. The LEDs are, again, around all four sides. The 60-watt adapter is plugged in. We got the projector on, the computer on, the camera is also looking at the screen. So, here's the screen. When you can tell, there's bar I'm barely touching it, and, or ba and but I'm getting no blobs. If you push down, perfect blobs. Dragging around really fast. Camera's running at 61 frames per second right now, at 320 by 240 resolution. Lots and lots of blobs. So that's basically an FTIR system. Once again, Tinkerman method, roll it on a silicone onto this material. When you touch down, the silicone connects with the acrylic and creates a better connection than your finger can. The projection material here gives the image something to stop on. And so we can run some apps. Let me show you that with the FTIR system. Okay, so this is FTIR system. And this is the fire app. You get no tracking just over the, by not touching the surface. I'm barely touching the surface right now and you can see there's no blobs. Push down a little bit and you start seeing blobs. One of the good highlights of the FTIR system is using an application that is really sensitive if you have fingers that are barely hovering over like the diffused illumination surfaces like DSI or rear DI 
or even LED LP and LP. Uh, basically, all the other systems but FTIR have a problem sometimes with, uh, you know, detecting false blobs. But FTIR is perfect. You have perfect control over where you want to control. Uh, this is a community Earth demo. Uh, you know, pinch zoom, pretty simple, and three fingers tilts the. Let's see if I can do that with one hand here. Here we go. Three fingers tilts the world here. There we go. Okay, so to build a LLP table, which is a laser light plane, you use lasers, as you can see here. Uh, some of the advantages is that you don't need a compliance surface, so no silicone pouring involved. You can use any type of surface you want on top, uh, acrylic or glass or anything you want. There's no LEDs. You don't have to have a closed box. It's pretty simple and it's really cheap too because all you really need is the lasers and that's it. Uh, disadvantages are you can't use fiducial, so you can't do object tracking. Um, it's also not pressure sensitive, and the problem that runs into a lot of people is that they don't have enough lasers. Um, this is a demo table, so all I'm using is two. You typically want to do four or greater, no matter what size. Um, that's because as you put your fingers on it, you're not, you don't want to block uh, any you know, light coming from either side. Um, so what I've done is really simple, uh, cheap and expensive. Taking a thick piece of acrylic here, drilled a slot straight down so this is actually through the acrylic. And then I put a smaller piece underneath, uh, screws on each side so you can adjust uh, you know, all the different directions by increasing or decreasing and then I've put a piece of tape over it. Um, each laser has a lens which has a grooved piece of plastic on the outside. You want to have it up and down just like that to create a plane. And you screw that on and it shoots the plane right across. Okay, so in an LLP setup to align the lasers, um, first off, always make sure you're wearing laser protection. Uh, these goggles here, the ones that I sell in the store, block all the wavelengths of light set infrared, so you should be good with those. Um, wear them at all times while you're aligning them. Even though the laser dot is going through a line lens and it will diffuse the intensity, you still should wear safety goggles so you don't want to burn your eyes. Okay, so basically you got the laser here. Uh, we're gonna throw the tape back over it just to push it down. I got the camera down there and as you can see, this is the PSI test app that I'm running here so you can see where the laser is. Um, best way to align the laser is to use a flat object, it's just a piece of wood, put it on your surface, and then grab your camera and bring the camera up and align it. So you can see in the image here, there you go, yeah, you can see. So this is the laser line here, and as I turn the lens over here, it will alternate and change this line. So you can see here basically you want to create a very very thin line so you turn the lens here all the way, pretty much almost all the way and you'll see as you turn it that this band here, the laser line is basically um, getting thinner and thinner and you want that very thin line you want to make sure that when you project it onto a flat object that it's just over the surface and what that'll do is basically it'll light up your fingers. It's hard to see in the video but my fingertips are basically the only thing that's lit up and that's really important so it comes down as soon as you, only as soon as you touch it does it break that plane and your fingers light up. Um, if you want to see what it looks like from down below basically this is the screen capture, and now these are my fingers. So you can see it's only as soon as I touch that it lights up the most. So you would do that for both lasers, or actually all four, because you want to have at least four lasers. Um, all right, so turning on CCV. Do a background subtract. And 
you should get your blobs. So there you go. Only as soon as you touch the surface. Kind of like FTIR. Basically the goal of all these optical tracking systems is to make it so that only as soon as you touch the surface do you get blobs. Unless of course you want to do hovering. Um, some bars like the eye bar and stuff worked on basic hovering interaction. Whereas most people want finger XY coordinate interaction. So this is an LLP setup. Um, throw on some apps here. Okay, to construct a DSI surface, which is a diffuse surface illumination setup, it's very similar to FDR, but you don't have to use a silicon compliant surface and you can detect objects hovering, fiducials, because it uses diffused illumination. Uh, a couple of disadvantages are that the N-Lighten acrylic, which is a special acrylic that you have to use, costs a bit more than clear acrylic. It's by N-Lighten, and what it is, it looks exactly like regular acrylic, but it has microscopic uh, metallic particles embedded within it. So as light sh is shown through the acrylic, uh, it, it's deflected by those microscopic particles and is reflected from the top and the bottom. So, as you can see, exactly the same setup as FT FTIR. LED ribbon in an uh, L-frame here. You, obviously, you can do whatever you want, but basically this is the gist of it. Ribbon all the way around, enlighten in the center here. And then you, what you do is you can put... Uh, either an L LCD setup, you would put this directly on top of your LCD, or if you're doing a projector setup, you would typically stick your rear projection material on top. And the best rear projection material is also by Evonik. It is their 7512 material. Now, 7006 is uh, 5 millimeter, and let me grab some of that here, hold on. Alright, so this is the 7006, it is a gray material, uh, both surfaces are single sided matte. Uh, so it's slightly clear on one side and then it has the matte surface on the top. You use that as a projection surface so make sure you look into light and, and find out which one is uh, the top. And so th anyways, this is the 5 millimeter. The 7006 is much thinner at 3 millimeter. Do a comparison here for you. Alright. Hard to focus here, but uh, basically you can see it there. There we go. So the 7006 is on the right, the 7512 is on the left. Uh, both very similar in gray color. The 7006 does give you a bit better picture, um, but both are about 50% light transmitting, so they produce really, really good images for rear projection, and their blob production is perfect. Um, it, because of that matte layer, it only has the blobs appear red as soon as you touch it, so it's really good. Um, as you can see, I did some testing on the 7006 piece that I have here, and you can scratch it very easily. So you see those scratches? Those are with my fingernails. So basically, make sure you put a mar resistant layer on top of the rear projection material to protect it. I'm not going to do that in this setup because it's just a demo. Okay, so diffuse surface illumination. We've got our 7512 on top. This is our enlightened frame with our LEDs going around it. And let me turn off the lights here. 